Applying thermal paste has started many arguments and will continue to divide the internet. And since it's an unavoidable step of building a PC, let's see how I will inevitably do it wrong. Welcome back to the channel. And since I'm finished stability testing Alpha Source, it's time to install my EKWB water block, which is my final cooling solution for Alpha Source. To do this, I have to apply thermal paste, which is a wildly controversial subject in the PC building world. And I chose to go with Corsair's XTM70 Extreme Performance Thermal Paste. Corsair's XTM70 Thermal Paste comes in a kit. So if you've never applied thermal paste before, this kit will come in handy. Let's jump into applying this thermal paste incorrectly. This is the XTM70 kit that we're gonna be using to apply thermal paste for Alpha Source. It comes with a vial of thermal paste, it comes with a plastic spatula for thermal paste application, and three cleaning wipes, and two application stencils. So the application stencils are sticky on one side once you rip off the film and you can stick it to the top of the CPU like this, run your thermal paste on one end and scrape the thermal paste over the stencil, reapply as needed and scrape until you have a full coverage over the entire CPU. You can use as much as needed as the paste is not electrically conductive, so it's harmless to all your other components, but it is messy to clean up. So I'm not actually gonna use this stencil as I've applied thermal paste before and I don't think that the stencil is necessary, but it's a really great addition if you've never put thermal paste on your CPU before. It'll really help and give you that confidence that you're doing it the correct way. However, I'm gonna apply the thermal paste how I typically go about it, which is gonna be putting a line of thermal paste at the top of the CPU and scraping it down, much like the directions of this kit say. However, I'm just not gonna use the stencil and I'm just gonna make sure the entire IHS is covered in thermal paste. So I'm gonna clean the top of the processor with the cleaning wipe just to make sure it's good and ready for the application of the thermal paste. Now we can get to the actual thermal paste. Okay, so we're ready for installation of the water block. I've pre-installed the backing bracket along with the rubber gasket and the standoffs here. So all that's left is to put the water block on and tighten it down. Okay, so the instructions said to install this in a crisscross fashion, doing two full revolutions per screw until they're flush down inside of the frame. And that last time this one was flush, so I just went ahead and flushed the rest of them in the same crisscross fashion. So the CPU water block is now installed. Whether you apply thermal paste like I did or you use one of the various other methods, the only important things is to choose a method and use enough thermal paste to get as close to full coverage as you possibly can over the IHS. There's no need to be worried about all the comments on the internet because if you compiled all of them, no one would be correct on the right way to install thermal paste. So the best bet is to just apply enough to cover everything and not stress about it. Now that the water block is installed, this motherboard is ready to be put into the Antec Canon and I'm super excited to get that done. If you enjoyed this video, you can click here for more Tectonic Systems videos. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.